think for any Jew, if he has a basic interest in the continuity of the Jewish people, then he cannot divide it from the security and life of Israel. Then it becomes one. On the immigrant ships, refugees from war-torn Europe, and they shall dwell in a new land. From the traumas and debris of the Holocaust, the chance for a new life. From Europe, from the countries of the Near East, they began with a prayer. In tent cities, much like their ancestors of old, and they prayed to start again in freedom. And they dreamed the impossible. Those whose lives had been decimated had a chance to live once more, to raise their children in dignity and with hope for the future. We have accomplished something that uh, generations upon generations of Jews uh, died for it. And uh, we, uh, Israel is not obstinate and, tra and intransigent. The Jewish people has been. If not, we hadn't been, we would have been long forgotten. It would have been somewhere in history we'd uh, read or study that there was such a thing as a Jewish people. Jews from more than 100 countries, from all the lands of the Jewish dispersion, after World War II, survivors of the Holocaust. In the first years of the state, from Iraq, Morocco, and the Arab countries of the Middle East. And more recently, from the Soviet Union. I am coming to my family, to my, to my land, and to, to my people. An ember of Jewish longing still smolders after a half century of communism. Families reunited in Israel. The struggle of Soviet Jewry to escape to freedom continues. Here in Petach Tikva, Golda meets with a group of Russian immigrants newly arrived in Israel. I have met many times with immigrants from the Soviet Union and believe me when I tell you that each meeting moves me so much that I haven't the words to express my feelings. It was, after all, a dream, a great and long dream from 1917. Once, a dream, to build a country from the sand, from the gritty, rocky soil of desert. Today, Moshav Shachar in the Lachish area, between Beersheba and Ashdod, founded in 1951. Once, sand. Today, a flourishing agricultural way of life, using all the tools of modern farming. Once, a dream, to bring the people to the land, to give them purpose, and provide them with the tools that they may sustain themselves. People like Yitzhak Ben Dahan, one of the founders of Moshav Shachar. He has worked long, hard hours to make Moshav Shachar more than a dream. Born in Morocco, married, father of nine children, including Yael. When I came to Moshav Shachar, there was nothing here. It was empty, miserable. I saw only sky and earth. There were even wild animals here, and we were very frightened. The beginning was hard, but slowly, as we worked, we grew to love the place. And when you see Lachish today, and you say why I say uh, I'm blessed, isn't it something for, for a person in uh, his life to see nothing, plus nothing, as far as the knowledge of the people was concerned, as far as their preparedness to do things of this kind, and look what happened. 
So this happened in Lachish, this happened in hundreds of Moshavim, people that came from countries with that absolutely nothing to do with agriculture. They never put a seed in, in the soil, they never planted a tree. Even. And uh, they're feeding Europe. But it isn't only Lachish. It's hundreds of villages. It's towns. You go to Dimona. It's a beautiful city. Uh, Ashkelon, Ashdod, Kiryat Shmona. What was Ashdod? Sand. Just sand. I remember the first few uh, wooden shacks that we put up in Ashdod, that we put up in Dimona. And here, here it is. But uh, I'm glad that we're not sad. I, uh, I become uh, impatient when people say, everything is bad, nothing has been done. Well, that, that's not true, it's just not true. But that we haven't been able to do everything that we wanted to do and that should be done, that's true. But then you always have to remember, we fought five wars. It makes a lot of difference. <laughs> the price of war in every area of life. Every step, a struggle. Ammunition Hill, Jerusalem, where 51 Israeli soldiers died. They asked a soldier here on Ammunition Hill. What pushed you to fight so hard in this place? A soldier was asked, what made you fight? And he said, I wanted to live. I wanted to live. I don't know if there's any other nation in the world that hates war more than we do. Even all those that preach to us and so on. But uh, it's conscious of the fact that uh, either or. Either we're capable of defending ourselves or we're, we're gone. The normal problems expanding education for Israel's young in an increasingly technological society. And the special problems. A deaf child. Special care and teaching for those who need it. Nurturing the young to give them too a future. what we can do here there's no limit to what Jews can do outside of Israel and uh, we have a lot of housing to do schools our uh, classes are too crowded in elementary schools I think there's uh, much uh, that we have to learn in the environment raising the standard of housing and education and living of uh, quite a part of the population. My God, wonders could be accomplished. The Jewish people, continuity of the Jewish people and the uh, safety and security of Israel is one thing, you can't divide it. And the Jews, whether they figure it out to that extent or not, they um, instinctively feel it. This is not something they're helping it has nothing to do with them or not nothing to do with them but it doesn't really affect them it does and whether they uh, know it uh, logically or whether they feel it instinctively that it, that this is it once they came 
on the wings of eagles. Today, they are in a dwelling and a home. It's been a long journey. And we, we have helped them come a long way. We've helped make the difference. Much remains. We can help them travel farther still. Partners in a lifeline to tomorrow. Thank you.